Ooh. Hi everyone, Cookany Rice, Rice Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new Igor album, Spirituality and Distortion. This is a new full-length LP from France's own Igor, a metal project masterminded by producer and multi-instrumentalist Gautier Serre. After about 15 years now of being an active music act, we are now getting Igor's sixth full-length LP, and it's essentially the latest effort in an ongoing series of avant-garde fusions of breakbeats, metal riffs, baroque strings, and operatic vocals. And sure, while the Igor formula has not changed up all that rapidly over the years, I can't think of many metal bands that come to even a similar balance of influences, uh, for better or for worse. As Igor's music tends to run a little over the top, or extreme, depending on how much black metal, death metal, or grindcore you have been exposed to previously. How However, excess can be appealing under certain conditions, and even when Igor is pushing my patience or the boundaries of good taste, I'm still in admiration as to how daring all of it is. It's certainly more challenging and refreshing than a lot of stuff out there, even when knowing pretty much what to expect going into this LP. This album stands as Igor's longest record to date at just under an hour in length, which is pretty significant. Even 30 minutes of music from Igor can be pretty draining with its abusively mixed guitars and drums, relentless transitions, can't be classical nods, it's a lot. And while you can accuse spirituality and distortion of a lot of things, holding back is not one of them. So I did have a somewhat reserved excitement going into this LP for all those reasons I just stated, also because there were a few good teasers to this record, and on top of it I thought Igor's last full-length LP was pretty good. So given that, it was pretty interesting to hear this record open up with a bit of a surprise. The track Downgrade Desert is one of a few moments here where Igor begins to work in some elements of Arabian folk music. It also happens on the enjoyably goofy and EDM-inspired Camel Dance Floor. Not really sure if this is going to be an ongoing thing or sound for Igor into the future, but the appropriation of this sound is pretty surface level as it works into Igor's usual mix of crisp metal drums and heavy riffs, as well as grand showy vocals like anything else. Overall, it's an okay intro. The guitars get a bit tedious, and it's not the best songwriting on the entire LP, but kudos to the very tight production and vocal layering. The track Nervous Waltz does live up to its title, as the kickoff of the song does sound like some very whimsical strings that would make for a very regal waltz. Igor building on that essentially with some harpsichords, some choral vocals, also more punchy metal drums. The black metal transition that breaks into the song suddenly is pretty immense, along with the eerie vocal and piano combo that follows right after. The ending is pretty crushing too, but God is the first leg of this track gaudy. The track Very Noise was an excellent teaser to this thing, though it sounds very much unlike a lot of this album, as it's a straightforward mix of break core and metal riffs. Uh, either way, it's a very visceral song, and leaves a large impact as well, despite being so short. Hollow Tree, with its persistently annoying harpsichord chords, also contributes to the first leg of this album being a little rough. The operatic singing on the track doesn't do it many favors either, but things do pick up slightly with Camel Dance Floor that I mentioned earlier earlier along with Parpin, featuring Corpse Grinder of Cannibal Corpse fame on vocals, who sounds absolutely savage, but really it's the super glitchy electronics and rhythmic switch-ups in the background that really sell the song and add a lot of flair. I can't say I enjoyed Musette Maximum, though, which is a very Frenchy accordion piece, which of course is backed with more pummeling metal drums. <laughs> Even though I do appreciate the combination of sounds Igor brings to the table, this track just sounds really gimmicky and horrendous. It's not much better when a similar instrumental palette turns up on the closing track, too. Himalaya Massive Ritual is the longest cut on the record, certainly feels like it, too. The song has a pretty winding structure, as well as these righteous, hellish chords matching up with uh, very culty vocal harmonies. For a few moments, the track does get quite drony, but generally I do wish it was a bit more meditative and transcendental. That would have certainly made for an interesting switch up in the track, List. But I do feel like what I'm getting here, I 
could already get in spades on like a liturgy record. Unfortunately, the track Lost in Introspection ends up being a major mark against the record too. There's not even anything remotely interesting or novel about the tacky combo of breakbeats and Baroque pianos this track brings to the table. Uh, we're not even two minutes in before the sound of this song is redundant and stale. Thankfully, the record's final leg does have at least a few highlights packed within it. Paranoid Bulldozer Italiano is not just an amazing song title. Also, it's another moment where the breakbeat electronics and glitches come back with a vengeance, syncing up really aggressively with the operatic vocals on the track, which occasionally uh, do get a bit screamy, which I do like. It does make them feel a bit more in step with the metal instrumentation going on in the background as opposed to just being laid on top. Either way, the track features a great ending, a good progression too. Meanwhile, with Polyphonic Rust, which is pretty low on gimmicks, we get some of the heaviest, slowest riffs on the entire record, some stunning vocal passages too that layer really well. While there's nothing super out there or left field about this track, it is just nice to hear something that is played pretty straight and just composed and performed well. To bring it back to the closer once more, unfortunately the everything but the kitchen sink approach to this one just leaves it feeling obnoxious. With all of this Eastern Bloc folk meeting up with the most pompous metal drums on the entire record, I, I don't get why the drumming is so relentless on so many tracks here. There are just moments where they distract from everything going on on top of them. Overall with this record, personally I felt like this was one of Igor's more mixed experiences. The grandiosity, ambition, and versatility really does help out a good chunk of this record, but there are also moments where uh, that works to the album's detriment, as uh, Igor just kind of comes together with fusions of instrumentation and musical styles that uh, just feel a bit silly. And you know what? Knowingly so. In the past, Gautier has made it pretty apparent that he doesn't take himself uh, or what he does in Igor too seriously. And while I too see the appeal in some of the weirdest combinations of ideas here, I don't know if I am uh, enjoying them as much as I am just kind of gawking at them and wanting to move on immediately to something else. Feeling a decent two strong five on this one? Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Igor, forever.